Krampus full effect. But uh, we're sitting here this afternoon with Jesse Cottonstone. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm hanging in there. We're doing good today. Yeah, enjoying this time down here at Krampus with the Void crew. Uh, is this your first time ever coming out to the Void property? Yeah. Yeah, this is my first time coming down. It's been great so far. It's beautiful property. They've done a really good job of keeping this spot. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of years of work, but it is beautiful just to sit back and enjoy. Um, your set a while ago, let me just say, killer set. It was awesome. I definitely enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing for you all for sure. Were those songs like from your your newer releases? A lot of them, yeah. I kind of do a mix of all my stuff through all the the sets. I got about four records out that I do songs from. So. Um, yeah, a lot of that was some of our newer stuff from Welcome to the Hell Country. You would like to share a little bit more about the other albums that you have out? Yeah, well, I got, um, since 2016, I've been, uh, 15, yeah, since 2015, I dropped my first record called Fires and Floods, and I wrote that while I was out in, in Colorado, in uh, my hometown, Manitou Springs, and it was getting taken out by... Uh, you know, natural disasters or what, whatnot, with the fires and floods and whatnot. Right, right. And uh, I self that was my first record, and all self produce, and uh, dropped that, and then followed up with uh, my sophomore record that we recorded all live in the studio in like this warehouse, New Year's Eve, and uh, dropped that to like early 2016, and. Um, the following record I did like a little acoustic just like single take single track um, and uh, just kind of a shorter shorter play record but that's that's kind of done like you know just in the corner of a room in the kitchen like how Robert Johnson recorded kind of a thing just playing on acoustic it's called raw and naked then I got um, my latest one is uh, welcome to the hell country yeah and uh, it's all original stuff, and it, some of it is is kind of uh, retakes of of the older stuff from the the previous records, and then you know current style that that we're kind of bringing live. So, so do you uh, play any sets with the acoustic uh, still? Because I I seen sometimes you. Um, when there's a call for it, um, it's super rare when I do actually. You know, do it when it's when it's called for and an appropriate. Like we have an acoustic showcase or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I like doing that. But um, I'm primarily an electric player. Yeah. With the uh, members in the band, were uh, most of the tracks produced with the same people, or you have like a mix of collective people that come together? I kind of do it. I guess say kind of like kind of like Prince actually, or like Trent Reznor something like that where I, I go in and play most of all the records I'm a multi-instrumentalist so I, I do more more of all the, the recorded parts and uh, except drums so um, I've had yeah kind of different drummers on the different records so yeah so you come like when you're composing you write all the music for the other uh, instruments yeah all that yeah and it's it's pretty simple as y'all saw with the live set most of my stuff is recorded with us playing rhythm section like that so it's guitar it's just me on guitar and the drummer but i'm i'm running my guitar signal through some processing and getting some low end bass with it so it sounds kind of like a power trio yeah you know it has that fullness to it but it's just the two of us and uh, that's kind of traditional up you know i've been hanging out in north mississippi in the hill country and the hill country blues in North Mississippi is it's super traditional. Play just two piece like that, and the, the low end is usually carried by bass drum, you know. Oh, all right. Okay. So, but a lot of guys over the time, like you know, there's all that low end you can fill in on these sound systems and whatnot. So, um, a lot of it, you know, there's a lack of bass in that low end, but there's still like a powerful show in it. So a lot of cats have started kind of doing this, you know. Right, like an octave pedal kind of thing. So you're hearing like bass, and it's shadowing everything I'm playing on the guitar as well. 
with the yeah. sound that you have because uh, one thing I noticed uh, what's your setup like uh, what type of gu- uh, guitar you play on? I'm playing on so today y'all saw me playing on a Gibson SG and um, I grew up playing on Fender Stratocaster and that was about it for a long time but I've been messing around with more like Epiphone the Gibson kind of style guitars I was mostly a Fender guy yeah just by just by what I had and I, I've always just like played on whatever I have I'm not really much of like a gear guy as much you know but gotcha. I end up I end, I've ended up with some pretty nice pretty nice ones and I can tell definitely tell the difference because sometimes they'll just play themselves and so yeah I'm playing this SG this Gibson SG that's pretty nice it's one of those you know I haven't really had one so like easy to play so to speak yeah, yeah it's like the comfort of playing and being able to do while performing that's right, right. yeah something real nice so how long have you been a uh, singer slash songwriter for i started playing guitar when i was about late 10 but i got my first guitar when i was 11 years old and self-taught mostly from blues records i was inspired by Jimi hendrix start learning how to play and nice. I, I learned that he taught himself by ear from listening to records you know start out and that the blues tradition is kind of like you learn these traditionals and then kind of do your own thing with them eventually you know and through that you start to kind of you start to kind of um, hear your own voice coming out through these traditional songs you know what I mean yeah and uh, as you start having life experiences, you got more stuff to kind of start singing about. And blues being a really emotive um, and cathartic form of expression, you know, it's real simple. So there's a lot of, it's a simple color palette, so to speak, you know, but it's uh, so versatile. There's so much it can express with that simple palette. And uh so that's that's something I learned at a really early age and the versatility of it becoming, you know, fused with other things crossing over. I mean, it, it became rock and roll and funk music and jazz and gospel and all this other stuff. You know, it's kind of the root of all the American music. So I feel like that's that's kind of a blueprint template you start with as a foundation and you're you're pretty good off if you want to play like American music. You know. Got you. Uh, Even you, up in a hip hop and like punk rock, I think you know. Like, would you say more with your original music? Uh, are you drawing more from your experiences, like throughout the shows, or yeah? Or do you still listen to other artists and kind of get an insight from? There's definitely always a learning process from ab- absorbing. You know, um, I feel like part of that. What I talk about the blues, you know, becoming, you know, blues had a baby and they named the baby rock and roll. It's like a saying around that vibe, you know. Okay. It's about adding something new to it always. And I feel like American vibes is like that. Like it's always kind of been a place where different cultures bring their traditions here and they kind of coalesce and mix with different things, right? And become like this gumbo. And I feel like down in Louisiana, especially, it'd be like that. You know what I mean? It's one of those. So I feel like these traditional music is like really honored down this way a lot you know more than than most of the states that i've been to i've been growing up on the on the road most of my life so um we were on the carnival circuit when i was growing up so that that helped get exposure to different regional styles of music and whatnot for me so i had a pretty early formative measure of you know what what the importance of of all that cultural music means you know but Louisiana is somewhere that that's super special, I feel, you know, and, oh, yeah. and honoring and, and relishing and that gift that we have. Yeah, yeah speaking of gumbo, um, you said this was uh, your first time at the Void. Uh, have you tried any gumbo? I was playing, like, right when everything was cracking off, so I hope somebody saved me some bowls. I know there was 18 different gumbos to sample. Oh, yeah, there's still uh, plenty we're, of gumbo out there waiting to be ate. I know, that's right. We were trying. We were trying to figure out what kind of rations we were gonna have to plan out to like get them all in without getting overfilled. You know, just have a sip of everything, I guess. Right. Have you tried gumbo before? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been hanging out down around Louisiana for probably about as long as I've been coming to Mississippi since like 2015, 16. Oh, all right. Yeah, and just been returning every time. But I, I, I started out chilling down around Bio Lafouche. 
and Terrebonne. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's deep south. Yeah. yeah, they took us deep in there for sure and brought us in. They love they loved up on us and kept us coming back, fed us up good with some of that gumbo and all that. So yeah, we've been we've been coming back about it for for a while now. We play Bex Fest over there in Bio Lafouge every spring. It's a pretty good little pig roll with the jambalaya and the white bean and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah, all day party with all the different different styles of bands it's really versatile the music scene over that way too because you got you got all the zydeco and the swamp blues and the funk and country and singer songwriters that are super super interesting you know where they're coming from so so it's been really nice being in louisiana over the years to be able to to share and learn about the culture around here and, and share where i'm coming from with my music too you know so the void and this this event is like a another level of it because it's it's more of like the counterculture festival vibe for me too and like this scene is like you know it's more in the jam realm and experimental music realm so it's right you know it's familiar territory to me coming from out west growing up out that way a lot you know um not only just like rolling around the carnival circuit but i spent a lot of time out traveling around the west coast to different festivals and hawaii and like world travel and whatnot so i was exposed to a lot of different kind of music and 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 styles of festivals and events that are super cool and this is a really cool unique one that i've been to you know it kind of brings a lot of different elements that i love together you know it's sick yeah oh and there's uh gonna be a lot more too uh liquid light show tonight in the warehouse holly rock still i know that's right yeah it's gonna definitely be fun uh you said the west coast is that like california way yeah i've been up there i spent a lot of time my first time moving away from home at like 17 i just took like a greyhound to seattle and spent time up in northwest you know i had a sister who lives up there and still even but that was back in like the late late 90s early 2000s i went up there and uh spent spent a while up there it's it was it was kind of rough you know because i couldn't really play in the clubs i grew up playing in clubs you know i've been playing professional since i was probably 13 14 years old out you know like working juke joints and bars and chitlin circuit vibes yeah. you know for a long time right and uh it was kind of it was kind of rough because i was on my own but i was under age so it was really hard to get into clubs without guardians with you like talking through you know yeah so like no he's good like you know just like you know it's like oh, i want to come in they were like no <laughs> <laughs> so i had to resort to other other kind of venue you know i ended up playing on the street a lot and honing my skills as a street performer and uh, that's something I still do, just, like, to honor that tradition of it. Like, I come to New Orleans mostly. When I go to New Orleans, I'll be, like, just out on the block. Like, I find a spot, and I, I hook up a marine battery with, like, an inverter. I'm just out there with my full rig. Sometimes I'll have a drummer, and you'll get, like, the same kind of show y'all we're watching today. Yeah. Out yeah, on, like, Frenchman. Yeah. yeah. And, uh... It's it's super magic, you know. Cause, I mean, that's like a two hundred year old tradition, probably in New Orleans. You know what I mean? It's pretty it's pretty deep like that. I right. think people have been doing that, and a lot of people travel there to see that. So you just you, know? you just find a random spot in New Orleans to yeah. set up and play. Yeah, and there's you know you 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 check out like the the flow of foot traffic and where's a good spot where why people are there. You know, I do this all over the country though. Sometimes I just set up and like rock out. When I have some days off, it's a di- it's a different way to like connect with a community, you know, like just get out there and like share your music like that. I ended up making you know some pretty good coin in my tip bucket kind of thing like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's an honor system of just like if you enjoying it, like maybe throw something down, you know. What would you say that you feel is your best setting? Like on you know like because you say you've played live at bars, you played on the corner, you mm-hmm. played at festivals. Uh, what really hits home for you um i think it's i mean it's everywhere has its special thing and not to not to be ambiguous with it but yeah every everything does really have like a special energy to it from like playing on the street you know playing in your bedroom right you know playing for your girl you know but like playing you know just playing out in nature you know those are deep 
and uh, just hanging, playing with your homies, like jamming at the spot, that kind of thing. That's different, you know, but yeah, to I, like playing on the street, the juke joints, the festivals, it's like they all have a really special thing. I, re- I personally like playing for like a huge audience at a festival. Like uh, one of the one of the better ones that that I've done just happened this earlier this year in August. I was down in Colombia in Pereira. I got flown down to do a headline. Damn. Yeah, USA represent USA Hell Country Blues in Pereira for a big rock festival. Which I usually play a lot of blues festivals and or something more like this kind of vibe. But it was a straight up rock festival with like industrial death metal like prog metal oh, yeah like you know some sludge stoner rock stuff shoegaze like it was pretty versatile like um, i think there's a lot of niche scenes there so they have to kind of slam at a lot of different genres to make a big event for a good draw and they had a killer draw it was great to see our music being embraced by youth culture in Colombia, and like they're like out there moshing to it and getting <laughs> crazy probably like we were playing for like like over 5,000 people kind of thing, and that was a nice audience to work for. So I really, like, long story short, yeah, I like the huge festivals. It's great. And playing on the street, like in New Orleans, where, like, people are really feeling it. Like, you get out there during Jazz Fest, and people, you know, be losing their minds when you're just, like, giving them your, your all kind of thing, you know? Would you say that it was a bit of a culture shock, like leaving the U.S. and performing in a different country, or was it kind of the same atmosphere? It's a little culture shock, but on, like, a really positive and the same, but, like, to be more well-received. Like, when I've gone to South America, it's 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 even more well-received than down here in the South, even. You know, I have to fight through it less. They're, like, kind of thirsty for it. Something different, you know what I mean? And they're honored that you come like all that way. Like I've been, I've been going to Brazil too for the last couple of years. I'm playing in Southern Brazil. Which festival was that? Uh, that's uh, they have a Mississippi Delta Blues Festival uh, down there. It's branded called that. Huh. Yeah, and uh, they do different editions that have different themes every year, and they're doing kind of a series in different areas for it, like sub festivals. But the main ones in Caxias do Sol like in, in southern southern Brazil where the gauchos are with the barbecue the churrasco barbecue and all that stuff is sick awesome. so there's a really similar culture to the southeast up here you know um, barbecue music is a huge thing yeah, I was gonna say oh, the yeah. food I bet it was yeah, yeah. pretty good oh man something real nice and the wine it's kind of down in the wine country too like their Napa Valley I guess kind of a thing like it's a nice wine country area hill country has a good vibe but they they really dig it and like the delta country traditional blues thing is kind of more of a new thing to them so their youth culture is digging it too it's like all ages but like a strong following for it is like you know the 20s and 30s crowds which is really refreshing because a lot of that is the older the older crowd you know in the u.s for the really strong followings for the festivals of blues and stuff like that so besides uh, South America, where else have you toured anywhere else in the world? Mm. I've been to Colombia twice and Brazil twice so far, but yeah, just other than that, like touring the USA, you I, know. And I I've mean, traveled to Thailand and lived over there for a little while. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was super interesting. Yeah, we had we had a buddy recently go to Thailand over the past couple of years and got a Thai tattoo. Shout out Allison. And that, uh, that yeah, the bamboo, the stick. traditional type yeah, the stuff. Traditional they just, stick. Like, yeah. they just hammer the ink into your skin with a bamboo needle. <laughs> that's hardcore. <laughs> oh, that's hard. I just pixelate it all over your body. That sounds way more painful than the gun. It, yeah. Well, I. And well, you got the traditional Hawaiian tattoos too. No, they use like, like yeah. I think they're like Maori style, the Polynesian style tats. Is it like the same thing, like with the bamboo stick, or is it um, another tool? I don't know. I lived over there on the Big Island of Hawaii for a while too. That's pretty hardcore. I'd interface with the Hawaiians, like the Samoans and the Maori, come over there from New Zealand. They're super interesting, super chill. And they have crazy tri- tribal tattoos all over them. I don't know how they do that, though. 
Oh, the travel tattoos? Yeah, I don't know if they're using bamboo. I imagine it's probably something like that originally. What? What's something cool about Hawaii that you really liked? Oh, man. I've I, never been there. Man, it's it's just, everything is wild about it. But uh, the Big Island is a really interesting place. The lava. Yeah, you can you can like walk out across like crazy lava desert fields, and it's like you're on the moon, you know. And you can like walk across that shit all night until you find like a river of lava, floating down the mountain, you know, just flowing. And you can find the spot and go sit on a shelf. It's super dangerous to do this. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was assuming that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, you can like get out there and sit on the shelf. And uh, if you can find the right spot, sometimes you can sit in the right spot where there's a plume. Where, you know, you can you can have vision of like a plume of lava coming out. Because it'll, it'll eventually it'll get down and like be traveling under this. And like it's real soft and like warm. There's steam vents everywhere super temperamental environment you know what i mean and uh but it'll it'll plume out and you can watch the waves like crash into it as it's coming out of the earth you know this lava and it's doing this thing it's where like, like constantly just, makes it just like yeah smoldering it and then it's like as it as the tag comes as the tag comes back it just like the fire comes in yeah water and fire some good obsidian and you sitting there for like I was sitting up there for like hours just sitting there like playing the guitar just watching it it was amazing you know hanging out with a couple homies and we watched an entire landscape get born you know what I mean it was just all this earth there now that like wasn't there like an extra like hundred yards of earth just being made right before your eyes just right there (laughs) mother nature a couple hours So, so that was that was a super cool thing about Hawaii you know yeah, I bet that was pretty awesome. It's definitely inspiration to write a song about, for sure. Mm-hmm. It was wild. And they, you know, they're on the tip about, they're on the tip of, uh, that's like their, the goddess is like the volcano, Pele, you know. It's like a fire goddess, and she's like the Mother Earth kind of source thing. And, uh, Gaia consciousness kind of thing. Well, is it like a like book teachers? They have a like a statues or anything. Is really? it what uh, the figure? Yeah, I think they they have a lot of representations where they honor that, but it's it's more like the what was interesting about it to me is is like a deity. They have kind of a pantheon, you know, and it's like really nature centric. It's like the o and it's like the ocean, and you know the mountains, right. And like, you know, diff- different elements, animals, different, you know, different, different. Yeah, el- like the know. ocean or yeah. things like, okay. And the sky and the sun and the moon. Like they have stories about all this kind of stuff. It's beautiful. Um, a lot of mythology around it. But this one is like, the Pele is one that you can see. I mean, in action. You know what I mean? The, yeah when you look at the lava and like their their philosophy around that I thought was super interesting yeah with all the different uh, places that you have traveled and all the different experiences uh, does that help you with some of your songwriting too it keeps me open to different perspectives but that which I think is super important to songwriting and the creative process is like being able to look through different lenses at the same things you know what I mean look at look at different perspectives and kind of get more objective views of things uh i think like part of the duty of of artists in society has kind of always been to observe and report you know from an objective view it's kind of like journalism or something you know what i mean where uh we're able to look at it from outside of it and and report it back in this emotional way that like communicates to other humans about like the human condition you know what i mean that's kind of how i look at that it's well put thanks you know, out, you know, outer perspective to get mm-hmm. an inner scope yes right <laughs> i know that's right so uh do you have any upcoming uh festivals or events you would like to put out there or upcoming shows possibly um I'm posting up down in Key West for 
the rest of the spring mostly and I, I might run out to South America again here coming up but definitely want to invite everybody out to I want to invite everybody out to the Juke Joint Festival in Clarksdale, Mississippi um, it happens I think this year April 12th it's always around the second weekend of April you can look it up the Juke Joint Festival jukejointfestival.com um, it's pretty amazing pretty amazing international blues fest people from all over the world come for it it's pretty sweet it's probably at hotels and stuff are probably already booked up but like you can come and definitely camp wherever you know it's a it's a chill like the whole town turns into a festival all the clubs in town there's a ton of juke joints there tons of blues history in clarksdale mississippi if 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 you hadn't heard, that's where the, where the crossroads 61 and 49 are. And there's a legend around Robert Johnson who sold his soul to the devil to be, like, the greatest, like, blues guitar player, you know. Yeah, I think we had covered that on a past episode, I believe. Nice. Yeah. He so, yeah. He played for crap, and he went to the crossroad next oh, day and came back, and, yeah. It's pretty wild. And, and my homie's got, you know, my he's passed now, but my, my homie uh, Samuel Davis... Is his third generation uh, owner down here at the Abe's Barbecue, which is, sits right at the crossroads down there in Mississippi, and uh, it's pretty cool to be able to go and like chill at a barbecue sitting right there, it's like thinking about that history. That's been it, you know, the building. It's been there since like 1924. That spot. So it was around the, you know, around the era that was happening when Robert Johnson was hanging around down that way. So. And that is that northern Mississippi? Yeah, that's North Mississippi. It's about um, it's about an hour south of Memphis. All right. Yeah, yeah, in the Delta down there. So it's it's a pretty special place. A lot of blues history took place there. But the Juke Joint Festival is going to be something real nice in April. We always look forward to. You know, it's right before Jazz Fest. You know, and I like coming around New Orleans for Jazz Fest and whatnot. But, yeah, Juke Joint's one that we always like to invite everybody to come out to. Everybody's always welcome and check out all, really. It's a, it's a pretty good, like, platter, like, sample platter of all different kinds of blues you could imagine. Everybody's, you know, throwing down all-night parties. We usually throw down some late-night stuff when we can, you know. So, yeah, you, that's a good one. Do you... Um do you have a place like you stream on Spotify or uh, SoundCloud? Yeah, anything you uh, anything you listen to music on, I'm pretty sure you can you can catch me. Uh, just look up my name, Jesse Cotton Stone, J E S S E Cotton Stone. You know, just like it sounds. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm definitely uh, listeners. All the listeners in the TCP horde and the Third Coast podcast community, make sure you check out Jesse Cotton Stone. I know that's right on all major streaming platforms. <laughs> yeah, wherever you find it, I'm going to be dropping that "Welcome to the Hell" country record soon as well. So keep ears out for that and release dates and whatnot. Uh, could you give us a little insight onto uh, your music that you're dropping? Like what uh, what influenced this? Uh, yeah well what i'm doing so a lot of i think what we were talking about earlier like you know um the blues like becoming rock and roll kind of thing i'm keeping i'm keeping my traditional roots intact with you know representing the blues from where i come from but i met what i do is i mix like a lot of the different styles that influenced me growing up um you know and a lot of my focus has been the hill country blues from north mississippi lately and uh that's been something that's uh you know been developing into more of this crossover rock and roll psychedelic stuff so i'm bringing in kind of like Jimi hendrix and like heavier vibes with a lot of the forms and traditional sounds of the the north mississippi hill country blues and that that comes up from around holly springs mississippi and up around like benton county and como mississippi are really kind of epicenters for a lot of that um it's a really good groove kind of driven blues you know what i mean it's more party music a lot of times and like real sexy kind of dancing music kind of you know vibe it's it's more on that tip a lot of times 
still talks about suffering and all that, but it's, right. you know, it's a little bit less sulking than like the Delta blues. Yeah, it's more like the mid-tempo blues. Yeah, like, like yeah. Not too fast, but you know, not too. Well, low. it'll it'll get driving on the tempos and stuff, but so far the emotion, the emotion behind it, I guess. Gotcha, you know what I mean? Gotcha. That yeah. And uh, it, yeah, it definitely flows from the tips. Yeah, sure. yeah. they kind of party about it. It's got it's got more of a different beat. It's got kind of more of a church vibe, like a little bit of a, more of a soul vibe too yeah. to it. It's gotcha, pretty groovy. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, it's more more or less like uh, it kind of hangs on the one, whereas uh, the other styles of blues kind of focus on chord progressions. But this kind of is is more of a groove driven. You know, and they just they just get like a, a heavy groove roll in and just roll with that. Maybe a couple changes here and there, but a lot of it is like, you know, pretty trance inducing, you know, kind of stuff. It's pretty it's pretty heavy. So I kinda take that basis and, and draw a lot of influence from other things and so I bring industrial music and some metal vibes into it that you know, I grew up listening to like Tool and Nine Inch Nails and things like that, Rage Against the Machine and all that. Oh yeah, that's uh, the grunge. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, like grunge industrial. Very like good there. Yeah, it's yeah. a good, good mix. So a little bit of that, but I, you know, I grew up on a lot of the as well the psychedelic, you know, rock music. You know, Jimi Hendrix and the Cream and Zeppelin and all that, all that crazy stuff from the '60s as well. Like it was always a big influence on me. So you know, I bring a lot of those influences together through through it. We call it Hell Country Blues. You know, it's a little, it's a little more high octane hill country. You know, we cross over on that. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Kind of the devil's music. You know what I mean? I grew up. My my parents were kind of religious when we were growing up. You know, and it was kind of like, it was supported that I was playing music and they loved it. So it's kind of this dichotomy because like we were going to the juke houses and whatnot, but they're still like following these doctrines and whatnot that are saying like this is the devil's music kind of thing you know so i got pretty confused later on when i started expanding my mind in different ways you know i was just like damn am i like selling my soul to the devil for real though it's <laughs> freaking out about it and that sent me on you know different different trajectories of studying different kinds of music and exploring different cultures and stuff though too you know yeah the knowledge and experience is definitely there whenever you're expressing it like uh performance wise yeah for sure i feel like uh yeah I, I went through that same problem with music as well thinking that you know am i doing you know well with the the whole insight of like right the writing process mostly and just like gaining influences from that and just uh finding a way for it to match evenly yeah, I'm a big fan of the blues. Yeah, That's what's up. Yeah, it's like, again, yeah, like you killed it up there. You had an incredible uh, performance up there. I appreciate yeah, it. it We're good. working on it all the time, for sure. Well, we're not going to uh, hold you up too much longer, Jesse. Uh, we always end the show with uh, words of wisdom. Um, do you have any for the listeners out there? A little insight? Any words of wisdom? Yeah, that you would like to spread. Like, uh, I, I can. Uh, my words of wisdom is to love yourself and love nature a little bit more. Because if more people love nature, the world would be a lot greener place. I know that's right. That's a really good. That's a really good one. I would have to say. What about you? What's yours? You know, it kind of draws from the earlier topics of your adventures to South America, but I was going to say my words of wisdom would be to travel more. You know, it's always good to have a, an expansive experience, you know, open your mind to new things, always explore the possibilities, you know, that inquire on learning more or even just exploring more. You know, nobody wants to be stagnant, so uh, my words of wisdom is to travel more. I know that's right. That's a good one. I think that's something that really, uh, something that's really contributed a lot to my life is is traveling because it's you know you get to learn to know yourself through that, and um, it's the only thing that's really consistent. Right. You know what I mean. You kind of get to like, is you. You're the only. You know, everything around you is constantly changing the whole time when you're when you're traveling. There's nothing consistent about your environment. You know. 
So I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. The only thing that stays the same is, is the things that you deal with with you. So you get like really in touch with that and, and get to lean into that instead of being, you know, a product of your environment, you know. Right. Your environment be, becomes a product of you eventually because that that then starts determining where you're traveling to and whatnot so it is good to start like keep on traveling that's what's up expanding your mind and shit right right that's right yeah i don't know i guess mine would just be like be good or be good at it and keep drinking water (laughs) stay (laughs) calm (laughs) you know take care of yourself love each other you know keep breathing and uh just remember that you're not a slave and you can keep doing whatever you want to do. And don't let nobody, like, hold you down from that. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong with it. That's great. Uh, uh, everybody out there, make sure y'all check out Jesse Cottonstone, uh, available everywhere. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you for coming and being a part of the Krampus Gumbo Cook-Off. And I guess we're out. Appreciate y'all. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate you, man. Hell yeah. Look at me now Tell me what I've become Ain't nothing now
Hey, it's Jesse Cottonstone here. Thanks for watching. We just got done filming this video out in the streets in San Francisco. Stay in touch with us at jessecottonstone.com if you like all this. We love you. Thanks for being a part of the music as well. We'll see you next time.